Hello and welcome. You have tuned into Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. I'm Shrishti Sharma and with me is Cheryl D'Souza. And viewers, this is the show where you get answers for all your stock-related queries. In a short while from now, we will connect with our experts to get your stock-related queries answered. And viewers, like always, there's a simple process where how you can connect with us. There will be a WhatsApp number that will be flashing all throughout the show on the top of your screen. As well as you can also write to us on our social media pages of ET Now on X as well as Facebook uh, handles of ours and we will try to get all your queries answered. Uh, we will connect with our experts but before that let's have a quick look what the markets are up to because um, what we are seeing is the fall coming in for the benchmark indices but we shouldn't complain much. Why so? Because uh, what we have seen is that the US markets didn't recover after yesterday's fall and as of now there are a couple of Asian markets as well which are seen to be under pressure but Indian markets on the whole are seen to be recovering from the day's lowest points. It's Nifty Bank which was down more than 300 points is now seeing a cut of 283 points right now and even nifty 50 has seen a smart recovery 150 points cut still persist but a lot of stock specific action there because uh, the fall in the crude is something that Indian markets always get excited about and even excitement building in for stocks uh, related to the OMC space tires even paints are doing well but on the flip side it's some of the PSU pack like coal India as well as ONGC reeling under pressure IT names for sure because uh, Nasdaq was down um, quite sharply in yesterday's trading session and on the back of that stocks like LTM, Mindtree, Infosys, TechM and even Wipro are seen decline and even m and more than 1.5% cut is what we are seeing right now. But with this viewers, let's move on and uh, let's connect with our experts and we also have share. Cheryl also with us uh, but Cheryl um, let's just have a look at the broader market end as well because what we have seen is uh, though there has been a recovery for the benchmark indices but uh, even today the broader markets are not that supportive. No actually that's not the way how the markets have been actually Shishti because uh, you've seen a sharp recovery in the broader markets look at small cap index. Uh, at the index yeah, talking oh. about the breadth of the market. <laughs> breadth of, of the markets okay decline. yeah advanced decline ratio has not seen an improvement yeah. Given the fact the way how the markets are panning out with the broader markets in particular if you're talking about your mid cap and the small cap index a solid recovery coming in especially for the small cap index it actually recovered uh, in excess of a percent nearly two percent from the day's lowest point at one point in time that was a recovery the small cap index logged in even the mid cap index also uh, saw a good uh, recovery about seven tenths of a percent and like uh, Shristi was mentioning uh, it is a lot of stock specific action in today's trading session you've seen the, a lot of crude oil derivatives or the com uh, company Companies that benefit from them are actually benefiting in today's uh, trading session like the OMCs, uh, like the paint companies, the tyre companies but on the flip side it is uh, ONGC Oil India that are under pressure on back of the fall in the crude oil prices. But uh, let's take a stock of also the other uh, industrial metals that have actually been seeing a decline on back of macro concerns stemming in from the key economies that is United States as well as China. Shesha is here to tell us exactly that and Shesha while all of us have only been focusing on the fact that the crude oil prices have actually slumped what are the industrial metals doing because even metals are not looking that strong isn't it? Cheryl, it's just not a crude oil that has seen a decline overnight, but industrial metals globally have also taken a knock uh, overnight. In fact, uh, US PMI data which came in at 8 month low is impacting commodities globally. Let's talk about some of them. Aluminium prices on London Metal Exchange have declined nearly 5.5% over the last 5 days. We have copper which is down 5%. Nickel and zinc prices have also declined nearly 35 to 4% over the last 5 days. Chinese economy woos also continue for the entire commodity basket. Uh, remember manufacturing data, services data and real estate property market uh, continue to impact uh, global markets, global commodity markets and Bank of America in fact has gone ahead and reduced GDP target for China uh, from 5% earlier they've lowered it down to 4.8%. So concerns around China which is the world's largest producer and consumer of most industrial metals continue and hence global commodity market continue to take a knock. In fact let's also shift focus to two uh, ferrous metals iron ore and steel. Iron ore prices have also been on a declining trend. 
they were above that $100 per ton mark, but they fell to below $95 per ton on account of concerns from China. And uh, that is also impacting markets globally. Analysts, however, as far as iron ore prices are concerned, analysts say that they have likely bottomed out, but uh, there are limited upside triggers from here on. And hence, perhaps iron ore prices are also likely to remain range bound for the time being. As far as steel prices are concerned, remember steel prices have declined uh, nearly 25 watt percent on a year to date basis and Indian steel mills are also suffering because imports from China and Korea continue to be on the higher side and exports have also been impacted because of global slowdown. Uh, so Indian steel mills, uh, mills continue to face the pressure so clearly not all is well for the Indian commodity market and global commodity market. Indian metal index on the back of that is declining 1% today and has fallen nearly 2.5% in the last couple of days. Right, thank you so much Ashesha for highlighting what's happening with the metal space so clearly uh, things are not boding well for the metal space all in all but we're talking about the commodities then it's the crude prices that have plunged further and that indeed is a good and a positive news for the Indian markets and indeed and on the back of that what we are seeing is a lot of stock specific action but how does this impact the various sectors and which stocks are in focus Somit is joining us to explain all of that Somit. If you look at Brent crude prices, they have fallen below the $75 per barrel mark. Now, this is the biggest intraday fall that we have seen uh, since 1st May 2024. Uh, yesterday, Brent crude dropped nearly 5.2% on an intraday basis. And crude prices are the lowest that we have seen since December 2023. Now, uh, what is more important is that Brent crude has been on a downward trend and it has been declining for the third consecutive month. In the month of July, it was down around 6.5%. August, it fell around 2.4%. And in the first few days of September, it has already declined nearly 6.7%. So why are we seeing this kind of a decline when it comes to crude oil prices? Firstly, OPEC Plus is expected to increase its production in the coming weeks. They are due to add nearly 1.8 lakh barrels per day of crude production uh, to uh, going forward and this is their own plan that they had guided earlier and this is to uh, restore the production losses that they had seen earlier. Apart from that, on the demand side, if you look at China's economy continues to remain soft. My manufacturing data for the month of August was at a six-month low and China is the world's largest uh, crude oil impact, uh, Im uh, importer. So the demand supply dynamics is changing and is uh, now we are seeing more supply coming in and the demand continues to remain weak. Now, India definitely benefits because of this because more than 80% of our crude requirement is imported uh, and companies that tend to benefit more from this firstly is the oil marketing companies because the fall in crude oil prices uh, definitely boost up their marketing margin. Currently if you look at the gross marketing margin that oil marketing companies are earning on petrol and diesel it stands at around 11.6 rupees and 9.1 rupees per litre which means that they earn this much amount of money by selling every litre of petrol and these both margins are at a multi-quarter high and as per analyst every 0.5 litre change in the fuel margin increases the EBITDA of Indian Oil Corporation, BPCL and HPCL anywhere between 7 to 11 odd percent. Apart from this, it's the paint companies, aviation companies, lubricant manufacturers, tyre and a host of chemical companies that tend to benefit. Also, cement manufacturers benefit because nearly 40 to 50 percent of that cost are either directly or indirectly uh, related to crude oil prices. Obviously, they'll benefit it with a lag because the fall in crude oil prices will reflect in the raw material prices with a lag impact. Uh, also, lower crude prices is uh, def uh, negative for uh, oil explorers like ONGC, Oil India, HOEC, uh, uh, because uh, lower crude means a lower realizations for them. And as per analyst, every five percent, a uh, five dollar per barrel drop in the Brent crude prices uh, reduces the EPS for ONGC and Oil India by around seven to twelve watt percent. So keep an eye out for all these companies uh, in trade today. All right, thank you so much for that, Somit, for putting into context about the stocks and why they will be impacted on the fact that you are seeing a drop in the crude oil prices. But let me uh, bring on board Shaina Mukadam to talk more about that and also where does she see the crude prices, what impact will they have on the companies and how should one read into it? A very good morning to you, Shaina. And the fact that the crude oil prices are actually seeing a drop, the OMCs are rallying, but uh, how should one actually view such a development coming in, especially if you are a holder of these OMC counters? Well, I think uh, lower crude, crude oil prices is a positive in the medium to longer term for uh, OMCs. Uh, they don't have the pressure of actually having to increase prices, and especially that is a positive given the fact that we are likely to uh, have a couple of elections coming in during the one odd year. 
while you know the government does say that it is a decontrolled sector there is some uh, linkage between you know uh, the ability to increase prices if crude oil prices move up and uh, the ability uh, you know for them to uh, maintain their margins having said that i think the first quarter was a bit disappointing for some of them like for example hpcl and uh, the grms have been pretty low if you look at it across board given this fact i think my top pick among the sector would be BPCL. I expect even the second quarter to be a bit sluggish. Uh, you know, maybe because of the lower crude oil prices, they may have to take some bit of a hit on the GRMs again. But if you're holding for the medium to longer term, I think BPCL uh, looks quite decent. All right, uh, that's the take coming in from Shahina that because of the movement in the crude oil prices with stocks that you can focus on and BPCL is one such standout stock that Shahina likes at this point in time. But with this fears, it's time to slip into a very short break. Don't go anywhere as we come right back. It's time to take all our stock related queries. So stay tuned and start writing to us. Welcome back. You're watching Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now, a show where we get you answers for all of the stock-related queries. And we have our experts who've joined in. We have Hemin Kapadia who's joining us on the technical front, while we have Shaina Mukadam who'll be taking all of your queries on a fundamental basis. And remember, you can write to us on the WhatsApp number that's flashing on your screen. So let's kick start uh, taking all of the stock-related queries. They're already pouring in, and this one is coming in from Satyan, who's writing to us from Kerala. He has 300 shares of LNT Finance. The buy price is 186 rupees per share. He wants to know whether he should uh, uh, hold on to it or look to exit. What's your take on LNT Finance in particular, Shahina? Let me come to you on this one. Uh, given the fact of uh, the space that it is prevalent in and things are not looking that bright for that space, isn't it? Yeah, basically, LND Finance uh, has actually is showing, showing some levels of uh, bottoming out at current levels. Uh, they are likely to, uh, they have streamlined their businesses and likely to do better going forward. Uh, so I would believe that at current levels, it's a hold. All right, uh, that's a hold coming in on LNT Finance. But moving on to the next query, and uh, uh, this one is coming in uh, from a viewer named um, OSN Reddy. And he's holding 133 shares of HDFC Life, but his buy price is 560 rupees. Hey, Main, let me come to you to have your take on this one. Can he go ahead and like book out some profits out here and rather make an investment into ONGC? What will be your advice, Hey, Main? Good morning. Okay, good morning, Shishi. Very good morning, Shell. Thank you for being on the show. I suggest if you've got a slightly longer term point of view, it's a very clear hold. We've gone off for four months in a row. We are walking into resistance around 770 where we can expect some supply to come in. So it's ripe for a correction. But uh, if once again, if you have an outlook of one year or more, I think it's a very clear hold, nothing to worry. This is uh, from uh, Dr. Parvez Jafar, who's writing to us from Abu Dhabi, who is a 66 year old gentleman, and he has 200 shares of Orbind the Pharma, which he purchased at an average price of 723.42 rupees per share. He's been a very patient investor. He's been holding on to this one from uh, September 2013. Uh, Shahina, he's saying he can hold it on for much more of a longer term, should he actually go ahead and look to stay put with this one. We've seen Aurobindo Pharma have its own fair share of a ride over the last 10 years or so. In fact, it's only the last one and a half year or so you've seen the share price actually getting back in action. What's your take? Makes sense to stay put with this for some more time? Uh, yeah, it makes uh, definite sense to continue to stay despite the investor having made money because uh, in terms of valuations, Arvindo Pharma is still at, you know, it's one of the cheapest among the pharma sector space and they have got good, uh, you know, good plans for the US. Uh, the US generic market is stabilizing. I think it should benefit Arvindo and they definitely have their plans in place for backward integration for PENG. So it is a hold at current levels. All right, then moving on to the next query. And Himain, uh, what's your take coming in on Cochin Shipyard? As we know that all these uh, defense and uh, shipping related stocks have seen uh, some profit booking out there. But given the rebound, would you advise Ellen a year to average Cochin Shipyard at this point in time? 
Yeah, uh, if the outlook isn't very short term, it's an average. It's a decline for nine weeks in a row from 29.50 to 18.1819. Significant time and price retracement. So it's not a bad idea. The bigger, the bigger picture remains bullish. So it makes sense to have it. Yeah. This one is coming in uh, from Puneet, who's writing to us from Gurgaon, and he has 100 shares of JSPL at a price of 1040, 30 shares of HAL at 5170 rupees per share. He wants to know whether he should add some more to lower his average or stay put. What's your view for a two month perspective? Hey, man, what's your take on both of these counters? And good morning to you. Yeah, good morning, Chad. Uh, I suppose so, uh, JSPL, it's, a, it's an ad. Once again, he specified two months. I wish I could request him to extend this time stream, but yeah, it's an it's an uh, ad, it's an average, and uh, same thing with uh, HL. I wish he could uh, make his time frame one year, two months, but yeah, since uh, both are in longer term uptrends, they are in intermediate correct correction. Short term bottom is in place. 55 day exponential moving average is almost being taken out. You can add more. Shaina, the next query that I have is coming from Sharmishta Mishra from Guru Gram and um, her query is, is this the right time to enter fresh at NBCC, keeping government's plan for the housing sector? What's your view on this, Shaina? Uh, yeah, it makes, you know, you can actually enter uh, even at current levels. Uh, they have actually started doing better now. Of course, the order book has always been uh, uh, substantial and uh, I think it is, uh, you know, you can enter into NBCC as of now if you're holding it for the medium to longer term. All right. This one is coming in uh, from Rebecca, who's writing to us from Kolkata, has 20 shares of Asian Pains holding it for over a year. Her buy price was 3,156 rupees per share. She can hold on for a longer period of time, but what sort of a target price should she keep in mind? Hey, man, the fact that she's asking about target, what sort of a target do you have in place for Asian Pains, at least in the near future, at least for one to two year time horizon? From blue chip stock share. Uh, one which is, is probably in a 35, 40 year old up move, currently has been consolidating for the past three years. I believe it's a very clear hold. Uh, 3300, are two important resistance levels, support at 3000. Uh, I believe it is setting the stage for an upside breakout from here. The short to medium term picture has definitely turned bullish, is the monthly picture I'm talking about. So, hold once these two levels that I mentioned get taken out. We are heading towards 39 and 4200. So hold. China, the next query is coming from Kunal, uh, one of our regular viewers who's quite young and a young investor as well. And he wants uh, advice for a long term investment, maybe for the next four to five years. He has shortlisted stocks like CDSL, IRCTC, Tata Chemicals, and even like CDSL at this price point. Shahina, your advice um, for Kunal, which stocks to pick up for the long-term investment? For a long-term investor, I think CDSL definitely looks interesting. Even IRCTC also looks good. I think both these segments, one is on ticketing, platform ticketing. Uh, having corrected, now it is again showing some momentum. And of course, uh, railways, uh, you know, the business is going to grow longer term. So uh, IRCTC definitely looks good. It's Both the stocks are slightly expensive at current levels. Uh, same goes with CDSL also. I think with the investor base growing, CDSL is doing pretty well, very strong balance sheet. So you can, you can put, you know, partially invest in both of them. All right. Uh, this next one is coming in from Rudra Gaura, who's writing to us from Hubli, who wants to know about Deepak Nitrite. Uh, 10 shares purchased at the levels of 1,871 rupees per share. Holding for the last uh, three years, actually, Shaina, should uh, our viewer book out profits or uh, continue to hold on to Deepak Nitrite, making decent set of profits on this one for holding on for three months, three years now? Uh, Deepak Nitrite is one of the stocks in the chemical sector which still is, uh, you know, a decent uh, stock to hold, being in the fertilizer segment. Uh, raw material prices are likely to remain pretty uh, even keel during the year. So Deepak Nitrite is a hold even at current levels. All right, then that's the day coming in on Deepak Knight, right? But with this viewers, it's time to slip into a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back to take more of your stock related queries.
Welcome back. You're watching by now Salon ET now, show where we get your answers for all of your stock related queries. Let's continue taking all your queries uh, with our experts. We have Himen Kapadia on the technical, while on the fundamentals, we have Shaina Mukadam joining us on the show. And the next query is coming from Sandeep. He's writing to us from Noida. He has a uh, Loris lab. He wants to know what's the long term outlook for this one, Shahina. He has 100 shares purchased at the levels of 550. <clears throat> he wants to know whether he should hold or look to exit. What's your take coming in on Loris labs? In fact, for the last few uh, trading sessions or uh, last few days, we've got a lot of queries on Loris labs in particular. What's your take? Because this company tends to move or has divergent moves based on earnings as well. Well, I think, uh, you know, after the correction, now the stock is consolidating. Uh, in terms of uh, holding, I would believe that you can continue to hold now, see it through. Uh, Loris Labs, actually, uh, uh, they have uh, gone through a difficult phase, but now I believe in terms of their uh, contract manufacturing, uh, they have added new products and likely to do better going forward. So from current levels, it's a hold. The first quarter was pretty disappointing and we had seen a bit of correction, but going forward, I think uh, you could see a rebound so it's a hold all right then moving on uh, the next query Hemen is coming in from uh, Shashidhar Reddy from Hyderabad and he wants an advice on two stocks firstly is Ashok Leyland his buy price here is 233 rupees and he is also holding Tata Power from a price of 425 rupees both of these Hemen uh, are these hold or exit at this price point I think Shashi want to do with this time frame I think Ashok Leland maybe he can book a little bit of partial profits while uh, if his time frame is a bit on the longer side, I think Tata Power is a very clear hold. Uh, we are in a longer term uptrend. It's just consolidating in a bull market. It's a time in price retracement. So I would be more comfortable in uh, holding on to Tata Power than Ashok Leland. But yeah, both can be held on maybe a little bit of prob uh, profit booking in Ashok Leland. All right, this next one is uh, coming in uh, from um, Ra uh, Ranjan and he's writing to us from Bangalore. He wants to know about JSW Infra. 1,000 shares he's purchased at levels of 256 rupees per share. He wants to know what's the medium to long-term outlook on this one. Uh, Shaina, what's your take on JSW Infra? How is this one looking on the charts to your recently listed counter on the bourse, isn't it? Well, it looks like, uh, you know, in the shorter term, it looks like uh, it's going to see some bit of consolidation or correction. Uh, but I believe it is uh, gaining market share in the fourth segment. So if you're a long term investor, you can buy it at dips. Uh, if you if you are a short term investor, then maybe you can uh, take some profits off the table. All right, uh, Himen, the next query is from Reshma Bhatia and she's, uh, what she's highlighting is that she's been scalping in two stocks, that is Bank of Baroda as well as Canara Bank um, and has made good profits in the past. But now she's stuck in uh, Bank of Baroda and Canara Bank, both of these having 7 and 2% loss respectively. What to do in both of these names, Himen, hold or book loss at this price point? Firstly, she needs to keep in mind the stock moves from 35 to 300 over three years. She's going to take a breather, a long breather. That's what is happening. 15 weeks of a correction and still counting. So there's nothing happening in the near term or medium term. It's going to take some time. If she has a holding period of a year or more, she's going to see 350. But if it's a time frame lesser than that, I think it's going to meander aimlessly to bounce up and down basically it's digesting a big rise so going nowhere so if she has the low threshold of patience i believe then she needs to exit for the timing and this applies to both can bank and uh, bank of baroda but once again longer term both are absolutely fine Right, this one has come from Gotham from Mumbai. 500 shares of Adani ports at the uh, price of around 1457 rupees per share uh, she's saying that the stock has not been delivering. So what's the prospect for this one in the next 12 to 18 months? What's your take came in on this one for the next 12 to 18 months? How does Adani Ports look to you on the charts right now? One and a half years. Stock moves from 400 to 1600 and now we're taking a breather. 1800 and 2000 coming in the time frame that she's mentioned about. Yes, it's consolidation could drag some more. The, in, the daily picture seems to indicate pressure. And it has entered an, inter an intermediate correction. But once again, her time frame, 1800 and 2000 coming. 
All right then, that's the take coming in on Adani Ports. But uh, Shahina, the next query that I have is coming in on GMR Airports. Um, and Reema from Pune is already... Uh, okay. Um, so, Hemen, let me just circle back this query to you. Um, Reema from Pune wants an advice on GMR Airports. She's already holding 700 shares and sitting in, at a profit as well because her average price is 82 rupees. Uh, what's your take on this, Hemen? The stock is a slow mover, but do you believe that in the medium and long term can fetch good returns? Good returns, uh, uh, Sister, I'm not sure, but returns, yes. Oh, I, I say decent returns. Once again, I mean, we are in a throbbing bull market. Many of these stocks are, are multi baggers, uh, uh, so they are going to take some time to recuperate, so to speak. Uh, this is around 11, 12 weeks of a consolidation. Once again, it's a consolidation in a bull market. The support at 92, the longer term mechanical indicators remain unequivocally bullish. So hold if it's a slightly longer time frame. But we are in a range between 100 and 104 and 89. So it's going to be here bouncing around without any trending bias for the time being. This next query is coming from Anusha, who's writing to us on Vizac, and also similar query we have uh, coming in from Neelam as well. So uh, Anusha has 400 shares as a matter at a price of 266 rupees per share. Whether to hold or exit, and the other one uh, is from Neelam, who has 1,000 shares as a matter at 98 rupees per share. So we have two divergent uh, buy price coming in. Uh, Shahina, when you talk about Zomato 1, where our viewer has actually bought it at a very attractive price of 98 rupees per share, while the other viewer has actually bought it at the upper end of a price band when it comes to uh, Zomato of around 266 rupees per share. What's your view for both of them? Stay put with it or, uh, or some other strategy? Well, I would believe it's better to stay put with it. Uh, Zomato has been one of the platform stocks that uh, I believe uh, has done pretty well for itself. Uh, you know, profitable. Even Blinkit is now going into profits in terms of their beta levels. Uh, if you look at the latest acquisition that they made from uh, Paytm, I think that itself uh, is likely to be a good growth driver over the next one to two years. You know, with a new app that they would be uh, offering uh, to their consumers. So, uh, you know, 2,000 crores invested. They have sufficient cash on their books. So, everything going for it. Uh, if you're a, you know, a long-term investor, whatever be your price, uh, probably you can sort of keep, if you're, you know, you've bought it at a very good level, you could keep some bit of a stop loss. But if you're a long-term investor, I think it's better to remain invested. All right, then moving on. And um, hey, I mean, the next query is from Krishna Kumar, holding 3,500 shares of Gland Pharma from a price of 1,468 rupees. But he's been holding the stock for the past one year, hey, I mean, uh, What's your take on this one? Is that a hold or move out? A uh, little bit of a caveat in the sense, uh, Shishti, uh, there is a little bit of positive of data. We have a few years, it's not that it's completely uh, sparse, but yeah, uh, range is between 1650, 2200. Seems like a consolidation. The bigger picture seems to be turning positive. I would say hold, keep some more patience, but yes, 2000 and 2200 to important resistance levels. Till it doesn't take out 2200 on the monthly chart, it goes nowhere. But I don't think it's going back to 1500, at least currently it doesn't look like. On that note, we'll slip into a break on this edition of Buy Now, Sell Now. Viewers, continue writing to us on the WhatsApp number flashing on your screen and we'll be back just after this break. Welcome back to Buy Now, Sell Now. Let's keep it going with all your stock-related queries. Then we do have Shahina as well as Hemin with us. And Shahina, I'm coming to you for the next query. Uh, this one is coming from Hemin from Hyderabad. And um, he wants your advice uh, to um, to know that which, uh, which stocks in his portfolio can be now trimmed down. Uh, as well as where he should deploy more of the cash. Um, he has shared his portfolio and that consists of four stocks right now. PB Fintech, uh, Zomato, Tata Power as well as Tata Motors are there in his portfolio right now. So Shahina, any advice like which stocks he can trim his positions in and rather which uh, he can go ahead and increase the exposure? Well, Tata Motors he can add in my view. 
PB fintech, he should continue to hold. Uh, you know, you have Zomato, of course, in PB fintech by itself. And uh, Zomato also, you can add, add at dips Zomato, while the longer term looks really interesting. Uh, maybe it will consolidate for some time because of the rally that we've had in the near term. So you could keep adding it at every dip and you could hold these three stocks for the medium to longer term. From Niresh, she's writing to us from Mumbai. He has 300 shares of ONGC at a price of 330 rupees per share. He wants advice what to do with this counter. What's your take actually, Amen, coming in on ONGC? Because with the rest of the PSU pack also, we saw ONGC also have a good run, like the way our OMCs also saw a good run. But yes, oil prices are falling. It's a negative coming in for ONGC, unlike what it is for uh, the OMCs. What's your take now coming in for ONGC? 330 is the buy price for our viewer. Slightly similar to what we spoke about, Shishri. Uh, major run up, most of the PSUs have seen the same thing. A rounding top, which is basically a bearish pattern. Uh, 11 weeks of a consolidation phase. And if I look at the longer term time frame, Cheryl, it remains very clearly safely and constant uptrend. So it is, uh, it's not even a blip, it's a breather in an up move. So levels 308 to 93, supports resistance 334, 344, hold once again. If it's a very short term uh, time frame, I think it's going nowhere, it's going to take time to consolidate with not very meaningful movements. But yeah, longer term time frame, we're at currently 313, probably a year or a year and a half down the line. We should be 100 rupees above the current point, uh, current levels. Uh, uh, right, that's ONGC taking a breather right now in the up move. But the next query, Shahina, is coming from Sandeep from Tirupur. And his query is one, uh, he wants to know one best mid cap stock idea. Uh, where he can enter right now uh, and which is now trading at a reasonable valuation and has also corrected. So any stock they have spotted as such, Shahina? Well, I would like to pass this question. You mean um, any of your uh, ideas from the mid-cap space that you like at this price point? Well, I am not sure if this quantifies as a, as a mid-cap uh, shishti, but yeah. There is a JK Cement. Uh, it's posted a fresh all-time high yesterday. It's overcoming. I'm saying overcoming because the week is not yet over and we have, these are the weekly levels. It's not sustained above 4,600 in a listed history. And now after an eight-month consolidation, is breaking out. So JK Cement would be my play. All right, let's move on then and let's ask, talk about Trent and uh, we have Rani Ramapuram who's uh, writing to us from Chittur and wants to know whether uh, Trent is a buy for the longer term. Uh, what's your take uh, on this one, uh, Shahina, Trent? Because this one has taken uh, the entire retail space by storm, isn't it? Given the fact that you already had Zara, you had West Life, uh, West Side, I beg your pardon. And now with the launch of Zudia and in fact Zudia also looking to expand overseas, uh, what's your take coming in on trend? Do you think it's a no-brainer for a buy? But given the fact that the stock price is perched in excess of about 7,000 rupees per share, what should viewers do and how should one actually go ahead uh, into investing in the stock? While we've seen the stock price rally, you know, given your spontaneous rally over the last you know, couple of quarters. Even at the same at the same time, I believe the financial performance has also matched up. So if you see the profitability that has gone up by multiples, uh, overall the expansion in terms of the brand as well as the stores. So I think you can continue to hold in trend. It's got everything going for it. The management is also, of course, from a very known group. So uh, I would suggest continue to hold a trend for the medium to longer term. All right, the next query that I have, you mean, is from Rakesh Gupta. He wants an advice on two banking counters. Firstly is Yes Bank. His buy price is 28 rupees. And he also has shares of RBL Bank holding 200 shares at a price of 243 rupees. Are these hold or sell at this price point, you mean? What's your advice on both of these? Oh, frankly speaking, Yes Bank hasn't done anything for years to stay. The way I see it, five, uh, four years and counting and nothing has happened. So I would suggest a switch. As far as uh, RBL Bank is concerned, these are the bank if to make a new high. State Bank of India, Access Bank, uh, maybe even a federal bank and uh, many of the banks, uh, ICICI Bank have posted new high. 
uh, the stock is nowhere close. So once again, I would suggest a switch from both these stocks to maybe a maybe ICICI Bank or Access Bank. All right, this one is coming in from uh, Ramachandran who's writing to us from Chennai, wants an outlook on HAL and BEL and what sort of a price target can he work around with when it comes to March 2025? Uh, uh, very apt when you talk about the time frame, him in HL, BL, any uh, target that you have actually kept in mind for March 2025 for these counters? Uh, well, yes, but I'll duck the March 25 time frame. I'll maybe extend it by maybe maybe a few months or six months more, shall. But yeah, HL is currently 4911. I would say we should be back to 5600 uh, in the time frame that our investor is talking about and the other stock you mentioned was the other one is bl bharat electronics okay same almost similar logic fanta fabulous move it's tired it's consolidating ranges between 280 and 325 i would say we should be 340 or so in the time frame that she mentioned all right, moving on and uh, Shahina, uh, one more query from the banking space and that is from Vijit uh, who is writing to us to have your take on PNB. Is this a good buy at current market price for the long term investment? Yeah, it's not my topic in the sector but valuations are so attractive that you know one can continue to hold if you are in PNB but otherwise if you really want to add a public sector bank, I think it's safest to be in something like uh, an SBI or even a Bank of Baroda, uh, you know, looks interesting. Uh, valuation there also uh, pretty attractive. All right, uh, we have Professor Thomas George for who's writing to us from Kochi, giving us a slew of stocks, wanting to know which one is a good bet to actually invest in for the longer term. Uh, let me uh, shorten the list a bit for you then, uh, Shahina, because he wants to know if Dixon Tech, Tata Tech, uh, uh, Bharat uh, Electronics and Tata Alexi, out of these, which one do you think are a good bet to look to invest in the long Longer term. It's all the very expensive in terms of fundamental valuation stocks. Uh, so if I had to pick among the four, uh, I would pick BEL uh, for the medium to longer term. There I believe the order book is pretty strong. And uh, you know, I would say valuations are a bit more attractive compared to the rest of the three. But I think all four of them, uh, if you buy them at dips, if you get any correction, they look good. It's just that the pure valuations are expensive as of now. All right. Uh, let me take this next query. It's coming in from Anand Mahishi, who's writing to us from Bangalore, and he wants to know whether it's the right time to invest in Bharti Airtel. Um, hey, Main, are you of the view that all time is the right time to invest in Bharti Airtel or are the charts telling you this is not the right time to invest in Bharti Airtel given the fact that there was a psychological barrier for Bharti Airtel, right? One, at one point in time, it would not move above the 800 rupees per share. The moment it would move above that level, some of the other uh, triggers would make sure the stock was below those levels. But now it looks like it surpassed those levels and it is touching new highs, isn't it? Absolutely, Cheryl. You're absolutely right. And now five years, it's in a, it's, in, it's been an uptrend for five years. Super move. Buying fresh would require a lot of technical courage. So I would play, uh, I mean, okay, we are in an uptrend on all time frames. Spread your purchases. Don't buy everything at one go. Buy it uh, in sort of an SIP sort of a scenario. We remain positive. So levels to possible investments, 15, 20, 14, 30, 13, 60. I'm not saying it's going to collapse till there. These are levels in case there's a big shakeout in the market. These are levels investor can keep in mind to sort of add. The telecom space as well. Shahina, um, your take on uh, Geo Financials as well as Reliance Industries because Sushil Kumar, uh, I believe that he's already holding the stock and uh, now wants an advice. Should he go ahead and sell Geo Financials at this price point and rather buy Reliance Industries at current market price? He's holding 100 shares of each uh, in, for both of these names. What will be your advice? I would suggest he continues to hold both uh, because then, you know, different spaces. Uh, I would say Reliance is good to go because of its geo holding. You have, you know, even the retail is doing pretty well. Uh, so, and also the oil segment is doing pretty well as of now. So it is better to continue to hold Reliance Industries. They've got the bonus also that's there on the cards. Uh, in terms of geo financials, they, uh, you know, the new 
businesses that they are talking about is pretty interesting. While it is slightly expensive on the uh, price fundamental point of view, I believe that given the expansion that they are planning, it would be wise to continue to hold all the th or both of the stocks. All right, uh, this next one is coming in uh, from our viewer Kamal and he has only written one word in the query and that is Hindalco. I'm not sure whether he is already invested in it, he wants to invest in it and if he's already invested or wants to invest, what's your take him in when it comes to Hindalco? How are the charts for the stock looking like in the near term, in the near future, should one look to invest in Hindalco and if you're already invested in it, what sort of a strategy should you adopt? Firstly, if you invested a share like a whole, four and a half months of a consolidation range is between 610 and 713. We are in an uptrend despite what could and is happening in the metal space. Hindalco is just consolidating in an up move. So hold if if uh, the investor wants to buy fresh, we need to buy probably around 650. Keep a stop loss at 610. When 713 gets taken out on the weekly chart, stock will commence a journey towards 750 and 810 and this seems like a distinct possibility. All right, that's the day coming in on Hindalco. But with this, uh, I would like to thank Shahina as well as Himeen for joining us today and helping all our viewers resolve their stock-related queries. But viewers, before we wrap up the show, in an important development for Fame 3 subsidy, the government may soon hold a review meeting. The third phase of the scheme is expected to further promote the electric vehicle adoption in the country and could get the approval this month itself. Samir Dikshit joins in with the details. Samir? The big development about the FAME scheme, the scheme that is aimed to promote and adopt a wider adoption of electric vehicles in the country. But we are picking up from our sources that uh, a FAME 3 review meeting is going to take place uh, very soon. Prime Minister office will be conducting this uh, review meeting for the FAME 3, the third phase of FAME. And within 10 days, this meeting is likely to take place. And the focus point of FAME 3 is going to be based on three pillars. The first one is related to the new technology. In the last four to five years, there have been many technological advancements in the space of electric vehicle EV mobility space and new technology has to be adopted. So that's going to be the first pillar. The second one is going to be the claim settlement. It has came to light to the government that the claim settlement, uh, the process has been not so smooth. There are certain uh, challenges which are yet to be addressed. So claim settlement is going to be another key focus area which will further be smooth enough. And uh, the third one is going to be the battery swapping. So government understand that uh, the faster this battery swapping, uh, the entire ecosystem is being developed, this will help to further push the electric mobility in the country. So these are going to be the three key pillars. But another important and the interesting part is that the PM3 scheme is likely to come up with a new name. As of now, the government is, or the central government is uh, having a discussion on 11 names. One name is likely to be finalized and with a new name, the FAME 3 scheme is likely to be introduced. Now, in the FAME 3, government is also looking to come up with e-buses, the electric buses. Almost near to dozen states will have thousands of electric buses. The government will give uh, a green nod to it. And not just this, some sort of incentives are likely to be planned. So that's the big uh, focus area in the electric mobility space where government is actively looking to come up with the PM3 scheme with a new name and uh, a review meeting is likely to happen within 10 days and the approval is expected by this month end. All right, thank you so much for that, Samir, for giving us those exclusive details. But on that note, we are out of time on this edition of Vaina Sena. So it's a goodbye from Shishti, myself and the team that put the show together. Stay tuned. Marcus at Noon is coming up next with Anisha and Somit.